It's been three years since his third capture, and yet El Chapo has not even attempted an escape. But I'm not surprised. His new home, ADX Florence, is a demonic hybrid of Alcatraz and the treacherous rocky ranges of Florence, Colorado. It's a forbidden experiment, a prison that shouldn't exist, a fortress so secure that every fence, every hall, and every room is impenetrable. So, if you're like me, you're probably wondering how true all of this is. What's so special about ADX? And what has kept El Chapo from breaking out of his latest prison cell? In the beginning, there is no true danger in dangerous prisons. Why? There is always a way out, a means of escape, either through thorough planning or death. But in ADX, escape is impossible, even through death. And that's why El Chapo has been trying desperately to get a transfer from ADX. Because everyone who has had the unfortunate privilege of seeing the cells within ADX have all agreed that the prison facility should not exist. Unfortunately, it does. And the only reason it does is because of a very tragic incident that happened back in 1983. The location was USP Marion, a penitentiary that was, at the time, the most secure prison in all of North America. Two correctional officers, Merle Klutz and Robert Hoffman, were escorting Thomas Silverstein and Clayton Fountain, two members of the notorious Aryan Brotherhood. All of a sudden, the criminals turned on the officers and stabbed them to death. This act of double murder became a national incident, and in the midst of the public outrage that followed, followed, someone recognized an opportunity. That someone was the director of the Federal Bureau of Prisons, Norman Carlson. The inmate's behavior is what drives their placement in here. By being violent, by being predatory, by being assaultive, by being escape prone, they are the ones that work their way into this facility. Somehow, Norman Carlson was able to convince the government that this was a great idea. So, after burning through $60 million of taxpayer money and after about two decades, a ADX Florence was completed and launched in January of 1995. The external structure of ADX Florence. ADX Florence is in the middle of nowhere. Built on a 37-acre complex in an unincorporated area with a Florence, Colorado postal address, it is somewhere in between Denver and Colorado Springs, with tens and tens of miles between any sign of civilization. Most of the facility is above ground. However, there is an underground corridor that links cell blocks to the lobby. 12-foot razor-wired fences, oscillating searchlights so bright they would search your soul even in broad daylight, guard dogs that are loyal only to the government and Mother Justice, hundreds of cameras and hundreds more motion detectors, 1,400 remote-controlled steel doors and tens of checkpoints stationed behind guards who are on constant shifts, have little to no contact with inmates and are vetted enough to be unbribable, and before I forget, there are special officers who monitor the inmates 24-7 and have access to a panic button that would shut down every door in the facility in a few seconds. And I don't even need to explain to you why El Chapo would not be able to dig out of ADX. Inside ADX Prison Every single feature within ADX was designed to ensure that the inmates don't try to escape, hurt themselves, or hurt others. Prisoners find it difficult to take their own lives within the cell walls. It is that secure. Each individual cell is just 7 feet wide and 12 feet long, and it has minimal furnishing. The only items you would find in an ADX prison cell would be a desk, a black and white TV, a stool, and a bed constructed almost entirely of poured concrete. The cell also sports a toilet that automatically shuts off if clogged, a shower that runs on a timer to prevent the possibility of flooding, and a sink that hosts no tap so inmates don't get the idea to fashion some sort of weapon. The only source of entertainment for inmates in the cell is a 4 inch by 4 foot window that gives a narrow view of the skyline. The window prevents the inmates from knowing where exactly they are within the complex, and this makes it virtually impossible for inmates to plan an escape. Inmates are only let out of the cell for one hour of the day. During that time, they are escorted to an exercise pit that looks exactly as it sounds. A pit for exercise. It is essentially an empty swimming pool that isn't particularly larger than the prison cell the inmates were brought out from. It is only large enough for a prisoner to walk 10 steps in a straight line and 31 steps in a circle. The Organizational Structure of ADX Florence ADX Florence is divided into six different security levels. Out of these six, two units are not in operation due to the low population of inmates in the prison. So, there are only four units in use at the moment. Those four are the General Population Units, the Special Security Unit, also known as the H Unit, the Control Unit, and Range 13. The General Population Units is the least secure unit in ADX, and it is divided into four other subunits, Delta, Echo, Fox, and Golf. Prisoners in these units usually are not as isolated as the others in the 
facility, and its inmates are allowed to socialize in a shared dining room. They are even allowed to secure themselves in their own cells and walk freely in their range. And if they remain incident-free throughout their time at ADX, they can get transferred out of ADX. The next unit is the control unit, and it houses inmates who have committed serious conduct violations or acts of violence in other prison facilities. For example, heads of prison gangs or volatile prisoners who have committed uber-violent crimes while incarcerated, or individuals who wield too much influence on other prisoners often find themselves transferred away from their prisons to ADX, where they live their lives in isolation. Obviously, El Chapo isn't here. The H unit is next in the pyramid of misery that is ADX, and it is the second most secure unit, or inmates, most of whom have had special administrative measures placed on them. You might recognize some of them. Umar Abdul Mutalab, popularly known as the Underwear Bomber, Jokar Tsarnaev, the domestic terrorist, Terry Nichols, Larry Hoover of the Gangster Disciples, and many others. H unit prisoners are not allowed to talk to anyone except government approved family members and their attorneys. And this communication, of course, is heavily monitored. Cells in the H don't even have a shower. Instead, prisoners are escorted to a public shower to be hosed down several days a week. Their food is hand delivered to them by the guards to cut off any form of communication with other inmates. Inmates in this unit are left to themselves and their thoughts on an excruciatingly slow journey towards oblivion. And as scary as H unit is, it still doesn't house El Chapo Guzman. The drug lord resides in the worst unit of all. That has a name so ominous, it sounds like it was pulled out of a horror novel written by Stephen King himself. The deposed head of the Sinaloa cartel resides in the terrible Range 13. Range 13. As you might have probably assumed, if Range 13 is as secure as they say it is, no one should know what it looks like, let alone be able to describe it. And frankly, you're right. There's not much about Range 13 on the internet. On Wikipedia, the unit is described as a special four-cell wing within the special housing unit for inmates in need of the tightest control. Besides El Chapo, there are only two other inmates that are known to have been incarcerated in this unit, Thomas Silverstein and Ramzi Yusuf. Ramzi Ahmad Yusuf is a convicted terrorist known to be one of the main perpetrators of the bombing of the World Trade Center in 1993 and that of Philippine Airlines Flight 434 in 1994. His terror attempts killed six people but injured more than a thousand, all of which he proudly admitted to. It is also suspected that he had ties to those who were responsible for the 9-11 attacks in the United States and is a prominent member of the Islamic State, or at least was a prominent member, before he got locked up indefinitely. Yusuf is currently serving two life sentences plus 240 years in range 13. The other inmate, Silver was not a terrorist. He was the reason ADX was built in the first place. One of the two inmates I talked about in the beginning who stabbed a guard to death. Another reason why he is so important is because he was the one who had detailed descriptions of what Range 13 looked like. His accounts of what he went through in that block of the facility gives us an insight into the reality of El Chapo's living conditions. Based on his accounts, Range 13 is like a psych ward, with its gleaming black and white checkerboard floors and minimalist cell that consists of nothing but concrete stools and concrete bunks with a thin mattress. There is also a steel sink and toilet combo, a steel shower, and a small black and white TV. The moment El Chapo got into range 13, he would have been stripped of all his personal belongings. His only interaction with nature would be through a heavily meshed four-inch window with an obscure view of just the sky. There would be no sense of direction, time, or place. The best he would be able to determine would be day and night. But the light of the sky would never be enough to light his cell, and so artificial lighting is what he would be forced to depend on. And to disorient him further, the light is controlled remotely by the gods and is left on all the time. So day and night really means nothing. Finally, there was a camera mounted on the ceiling that monitors every movement within the cell every living second of every day. The cells are completely soundproof, which means there is zero communication between El Chapo and anyone but himself. Silverstein would later describe the experience in ADX as living in a concrete beast. In Range 13, El Chapo's biggest concern will not be escaping from the prison, it will be, and has been, trying to escape the crushing loneliness and the effects it has on the mind. After his arrest in 2014, El Chapo told Mexican officials that he was responsible for 2,000 to 3,000 deaths. In reality, and when you take into account the deaths he is indirectly responsible for, that figure could be well over 100,000. Whether or not El Chapo feels remorse for what he did, you can be sure that if he stays here long enough, he will find his guilt. And if care isn't taken, it will 
drive him crazy. And that's what makes Range 13 different. It's not just a cage meant for preventing escape, it is a cell meant to break the spirits of the inmates. Which is why it has been the subject of so many human rights debates. Numerous lawsuits have been filed over the years, but prison directors maintain that all those in the facility deserve whatever treatment they are currently receiving. And like I said at the beginning of this video, El Chapo himself has tried and is still trying to get a transfer. Everyone knows he deserved to be punished, but the question is, could Range 13 be a little too much of a punishment for a man as notorious as El Chapo?